Now to my favorite sponsor because I sleep on one of these things, Helix Mattress. The best. Take their two-minute sleep quiz and they'll match you to a mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. All you got to do, go to helixsleep.com slash wild. Guys, the key to life is hydration. Water, a lot of times, is not enough. That's why you got to check out Liquid IV. They got lots of great flavors. All you got to do is go to liquidiv.com. Also, you can find it at Costco. Put in the promo code WILD, and you will get 25% off your order. It is great. You know what, Giannis? A beard is more than just hair on your face. Yeah, sometimes it's a girl that a gay guy's dating. It's what it is. Go to Target and pick up Duke Cannon beard bombs. Go to DukeCannon.com and get the best damn beard wash today. These co This company doesn't even have a promo code. No, they don't even have a promo code. You can go to DukeCannon.com. You can pick this uh, their stuff up at Target. They got beard wash, beard oil, and beard balm. Yeah, and it says it can lather not only it, 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 it lathers you up, it moisturizes skin underneath, and it says it doesn't only it doesn't only affect it. It says it's lather not only conditions your whiskers, so Uncle Russell's listening now because he hears whiskers, and it moisturizes the skin underneath so it'll look nice if you ever go insane and decide to shave. Because this is for you, because make no mistake, when you shaved, I would get mad. That's why we ended the podcast, because you shaved. Yeah, you got to, guys, facial hair is the thing now. If you want to look masculine, you want to look like you hunt, get yourself a beard, and you can't just walk around with a scruffy, gruffy beard. Your beard has to look well manicured and cute. So get yourself some beard wash to clean it, some beard oil to make it look smooth, and some beard balm. I don't know what the fuck that does. The next time you're storming the Capitol, make sure you go to DukeCannon.com. What's up, Cuzzy Wuzzies? You're listening to the Bay Ridge Boys, History Hyenas, bad. <laughs> Right. Welcome to another episode of History Hyenas. Okay, here, listen, we're doing it from, we're inside my love sack. We're inside the love sack, which is inside the cozy womb of your apartment. Yeah. Now, I mean, if, if your apartment had a womb, it would be inside the love sack. Yeah. Now, if you're a toot that's got banged out on my love sack, maybe this episode's not for you. Here's the thing about Chrissy D. He has a love sack, and the love sack is a real example of your life. Yeah. You want me to explain why? Of course. That's yeah. Okay. Because uh, should I turn off the air conditioner? No, I think we're fine because you got a nice mic that looks like a that looks actually like a blush uh, a blush oh, a like brush for women. A yeah. Yeah. Because you got early onset. Because if I come in here and I see you in makeup and a Nazi uniform. I'm calling the mental health police. It's what it is. Wow, that'd be a fucking dream to be a transgender Nazi. Cause you do weird things in here. No, you, Wei Zhang Xing, but you do Wei like the, you do like the uniforms. I like the uniforms. But you do have a, gen, a German genetic code, which has ex, once you figured that out, it explained a lot about some of your opinions. Yeah, it's just what it is. <laughs> now, all right, go ahead. Yeah, explain. This, this is how the love seat is a symbol of your life. Let's see. Okay. Let's if see. you can have when you're impatient, the jaws got to come out because it's the only thing that can make you sit still. Yeah. Because you just don't have that much patience for a for an FF Greek kid. Yeah, for an especially when I'm having anxiety attacks, which is what we're going to talk about today. Yeah, yeah, but, I, yeah. But your love sack, I lay on it. Hey, Bert comes over and he puts his body on it. Yeah, you bang toots on it. Yeah, and it's Delilah's favorite thing. So we're, there's a lot of different elements on that love sack. Yeah, yeah, that's your whole life right there. Yeah, yeah, and you never sit on it. I never sit on you it. You prefer the car seat. Yeah, I like to sit in the car seat, and it's why my neck just hurts all the time. Because, cuz, make no mistake, I got a couch that's the size of a front seat of a car, and it was a bad decision. Yeah, well, it's thank God you like sitting in it because at least you're getting some of your money's worth because it cost you four grand. Four grand, and, and I've had it for a few months, and my daughter dropped water in it and stuck a nickel down one of the slots, and now I can't even charge my phone in it. Yeah, you can't charge your phone in it. It doesn't kick back, and it's only big enough for two. Two women or one fat guy? It's just what it is. Right now, we're shoulder to shoulder like we're sitting on a fucking yeah. economy spirit flight. Because for the first time in a long time- Because you're a handsome kid from the profile as well. Yeah. But when your, jaw, when your bottom jaw pops up, you're a little Franks and Beans. Franks and Beans, because you 
two for the first time in a long time. I'm actually seeing you with two white clean socks that don't have holes in them because you're going through a lot. I'm going through a lot because I'm looking at your foot. And I just realized that your foot is shaped like a woman's in high heels. Yeah, it's just, yeah. Why does your foot <laughs> Cause I got weird. Yes. <laughs> your foot is no. Put the other one. Oh, like your that. Foot is shaped like you're wearing a high heel. Like I'm wearing a high heel I'm right now. Take a picture of it. And the only time I don't have anxiety is when we're doing this podcast because I have such a good time. It's just what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we got fucking junkies that live two blocks from your house. Yeah. We're gonna have to. Unfortunately, I'm reading a book and it's a little thing. It's uh, it's a book by Toni Morrison. Rest in peace, Toni Morrison. Chris, don't tell them what the book is. I can't say it. You can. Okay. It's Sheila Faith Weiss, Human Genetics and Politics in the Third Reich. <laughs> the Nazi Symbiosis. And I'm just, it's just a little light reading. It's a little light reading. It's a little light reading. And, uh, and should we take a picture of it and show that? Yeah. yeah. I put it for the Patreon. But listen, it's a, it's, it's a historical it's a book. It's a historical book, but they just, there's just, they've given me some options on how to clean out the neighborhood. <laughs> They just, they just, yeah, there's just a few ideas on how to get rid of the drug addicts. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. kids become a property owner when you're sitting down with them and he, we're having coffee and he goes, this is my fucking view right now. We need to clean this fucking place up. Yeah. We were sitting down eating bacon. We were eating uh, egg and cheese sandwiches and I, I switched out the bacon for avocado because I'm an FF. <laughs> <laughs> and we were just sitting looking on Third Avenue and we just saw, yeah, we saw crackheads and we just saw a couple of uh, people from another hemisphere. And I was just like, you know, why did I buy it? I, I own property here. So I'm going to have to just call I'm my gonna, councilman. Yeah, it's it's. Time, I was about to say that it's time to get in to have the councilman uh, in a text thread. Yeah. Me, you and the councilman need to get in a text yeah, thread. Councilman Justin Brandon's got to hear from us. Yeah. He's um, an FF. We need to get a list from you guys of... Uh, how you know you're an FF, okay? okay? Because when you switch out bacon for avocado, that definitely means you're an FF. You're an FF bed. What are some other FF things? Um, you're an FF if you switch out bacon for avocado. Um, you're an FF if you're a guy and you do the elliptical at the gym. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you're an FF if you have a love sack Yeah, if you have a love sack, you're an FF If you're one of those guys that's, that uh, is way, way, way too in shape And you got a full head of hair You're, you're an FF Like you're the kid FF. we walked by yesterday was an FF And the other kid we saw was low-level scum Yeah, low-level scum Now we've added a new one You can be an FF Or you can be a low-level scum in LLS Listen, FF, people have been asking me what it means If your friends ask, it means fat fuck Okay, but we all know what it really means. It's just 2019, and Chris has an overall deal with something cor in corporate America. Yeah, so I can't, I gotta just be very careful because, yeah, make no mistake, I'm trying to pay for my daughter's college. I'm just trying to keep, I'm just trying to keep my daughter. I just, I just want her to go, go to school and not get a tattoo and a tit. And the, and the read the way and I'm that's gonna, gonna cost a couple hundred grand. And that's gonna cost a couple hundred grand to just send her to private school and make sure she doesn't get a tattoo and a tit and take, go to fucking take a shower in the fire hydrant. And it's just going to be, it's just going to be a, a lot of money. So right now there's a corporation that's paying me a lot of money to keep my daughter in the private schools and make sure she stays as weight as possible. So Wei Shang Chi, Wei Shang Chi, and Wei Shang Chi, and obviously. So I just, yeah. So you guys know what FF means, but tell your friends it just means, just means fat fuck it or means, fucking fat. It means fat fucking. Also, yeah. Chris also needs to couple to have a couple dollars uh, insurance money just in case his baby's mama's mom wants to go uh, to. Uh, uh, it wants to go to, uh, you know, uh, what's the cosmetic dentistry school? Yeah, just in case. Yeah, just in case my baby's mama's mama wants to go to DeVry. Um, I'm going to have to change it up. And also, let's be honest, just in case, just in case Barney Rubble, my pops, get, gets into my account, puts a few fuck, few thousand on the Yanks. Yeah. I got to just have some extra cash lying around because you never know when he's going to get his fucking, when he's going to get his Flintstone fingers in there on my buddy and then just put put some something down on, on, the, on the Yanks. Yeah, well, the thing about uh, your relationship is it's kind of like you're, you're the FBI and he's he's Leonardo he's Leonardo DiCaprio and you're Tom Hanks. Yeah, it's just so what it is. He, he's always once you're always one he's always one step ahead of you or you're one step, step ahead, ahead of him. Yeah. So he figures out a loophole and he exploits it and then you got to do a new line of defense. Yeah, it's just what it is. He's like a hacker and you're yeah. like a security company on a digital company. You're like a digital security company. Yeah, so it's just, I'm just trying to find the pronunciation for Wei Zhang Jin so we can play it because really us going into this podcast without the Wei Zhang Jin button is like 
kind of walking into a battle without without being strapped. Without weapons. But let's be crystal clear with how bad Zach is at the audio. I mean, what's the difference if we go into the city and do this or do it from this fucking little piece of shit blush microphone that I have? I, there really is no difference. Uh, not only is Zach, is Zach bad at the audio, I'm going to go so far as to say... He's bad at everything. Yeah, he just hasn't figured it out. Yeah. And any, I don't think he's ever edited out one thing we've told him to edit out. We got it? Let's play it. Let's see. Let's see if it works. Yeah, it's just not working. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah. Play it again. Yeah. How, how do we I play mean, it? how hard is that, Zach? Look, that's your, own, that's your only fucking job. That's your only job. Let's play it one more time. Yeah, yeah. that's the only job. This is just to wash away. Way song that was to wash away the book that Chris is reading. Yeah, and you know what? Yeah, it's... it's, it's you know what's going to happen? But I, can I finish 1776? You can finish 1776, but you know what's going to happen, cuz? Okay, like we did last episode where I had to say, listen, the batteries thing, that was just a joke. Yeah, because somebody signed up for the thousand dollars <laughs> yeah. yeah and we got to get that kid his money back and he wrote can i just yeah the message is pretty funny yeah and uh yeah and also somebody's eventually going to get a way jean tattoo on them yeah it's gonna happen yeah that will happen and it's just going to be yeah a kid um uh i, I won't say it's well it's his, his patron name is first pseudo penis transplant patient <laughs> And he wrote us a message said, um, cuzzies, I fucked up. I got way too excited when I found 500 AA batteries and was thinking about, hey, Bert. So I signed up for the $1,000 level and it actually charged me right away. I can't give away a grand right now. I got a situation with the mother. Yeah. And he's asking, what can I do? And the truth to answer is where the history I is, we don't know. You got to call Patreon. You got to call Patreon. We don't know. Look, our fans are so hilarious over at patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys. We're really amping up the content because guess what? We're just screwed in and we want your money. Oh, should we, by the way, the, uh, the Patreon people, um, you know, for people to go to patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys, should we read out the PPWs of the week that we picked real quick? Yeah. Okay, so just real quick, we're going to do this almost we're gonna do it every episode say, every month. Can I just say my favorite of all time already right now? Have well, me laughing for 10 minutes? Well, no, well, let, let me read out the three okay. PPWs of last week and then you say who you think the PP, you, you've picked one for this week you do that because you have no fingernails they're almost chewed off yeah they're chewed off because yeah because we're just yeah I, I i gotta i have anxiety your foot is shaped like it's in a high heel and it, the patreon members are gonna love seeing them yeah it looks like an isosceles triangle all right <laughs> ppw of the week number one we picked three f first name because we love the names marcus half african-american captain of the fume room <laughs> <laughs> That's one. Number two, we got Jimmy Pets Pizzola. Got Dolphins half price cuss. Yeah, we remember that guy. That guy's an all star. That kid's like Kyrie Irving. And then number three, Krista Legal Two takes it past the uvula Marie. Yeah, that's a good one. And then Giannis's favorite from this week is go ahead. You can say yeah. it. Now, Re Reno the horned up sauce monkey. Yeah, Giannis was laughing really hard at Reno the horned up sauce monkey, and it's just ten out of ten. Yeah, I was um I was laughing. We were actually um, contemplating whether we're going to do a uh, in memoriam for when people delete like yeah guys listen we appreciate your support also it's a party over there so go support us you know um you know we got a lot of pampas to buy we got a lot of things to get patreon.com slash bay rich boys. boys yeah and also go to history hyenas.net for all our merchandise no it's not dot net you fucking ff what is it it's dot com oh sorry i thought yeah. we were dot net because we're fucking low-level scum yeah we're but low we're dot com kids we're fucking moved up we're dot com kids we're dot com kids because i went from Giannis Pappas dot net low level scum yeah to fucking ff Giannis Pappas comedy.com yes okay so history hyenas.com that's h-i-s-t-o-r-y h-y-e-n-a-s.com um <laughs> did i spell hyenas right i don't know history hyenas.com i don't know if i spelled it right get your get your cap up there though because it's blindingly pale yeah history hyenas.com for all our t-shirts website and guess what we're gonna do in october we haven't picked a date yet but we're gonna do the first First live high history. We're gonna do the first live history I Hina's podcast from New York fucking city. Yeah, we're planning it right now. We're picking a date right now, and I'm making a promo video right now. Yo, marketing! Marketing! Yeah. Yeah, cuz, yeah, cuz, yeah, I know my, my thighs are, are, are uh, blindingly I white. I you're a little too loud. Cuz, that's it, because I'm going through a lot and my, my, my levels are off. Yeah, you're going through a lot, cuz, and yeah, we were going to do a whole episode on Harriet Tubman, and we will do the episode on Harriet Tubman, but make no mistake, Giannis has been passing out and screaming at the top of his lungs with anger. So he suggested, why don't we just do an episode on the history of anxiety? Cuz, make no mistake, you're suffering from it. Cuz, I'm suffering from anxiety. You suffer from anxiety. 
anxiety. I suffered from anxiety I a lot. It's just something smart kids suffer from. Yeah, I think yeah, because if you if you're if you're a dumb kid and and you can't get in tune in touch with yourself, then I think the anxiety just it doesn't really exist um, because you're just too dumb to to get there. Like you know, but like we're you know, in touch with ourselves. So we, we suffer from it. I mean, I've suffered from, you know, I used to do this whole thing on Instagram, anxiety Tuesdays, and I don't do it anymore because the truth is I don't suffer from the anxiety like I used to. And now I look at my anxiety as something that, you know, holds me back as opposed to something that's a part of me. I mean, cause I have the word anxiety tattooed on my forearm. I know you are, uh, you used to be low level scum. I, I still, I have low level scum tats. Yeah. You're a low level scum type of kid yeah. who's figured it out and you just moved up in the world and now you got West Elm's tool. Well, cause there's nobody who's fucking low level scum. Who's got West Elm stools? Once you get fucking West Elm stools, you graduate from the low level scum to fucking cute kid. And let me just tell you something, guys, me, guys. about anxiety. And this is for Yanni Papa. This is for our, our our fans. It's just something that really helped me. If if things are not going to matter in five months, then I don't give it more than five minutes. I mean, I used to get paralyzed by anxiety by figuring out what to wear because I'm an FF. Um, and you know, things that were never going to matter in five months, what airplane seat I was going to pick. It was never going to matter. So now I do not, the only thing I give more than five minutes in my life are things concerning my daughter or my career, because those things will matter. So I do. And now with that, with just limiting to worrying about those two things, my anxiety is almost at a zero. Giannis, you have things that will matter in five months because you're making decisions with ailing parents. So I understand why you have anxiety, but I'm, I just want you to cope with it a little bit better. And I think you, at this point, you're going to need to talk to a therapist, even though I know Greeks, it, Greeks are very weird people because they, 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 they have a lot of pride in that, the sense that they're like, we're not going to go see therapists. I'm not sick, but then they will somehow they'll fuck guys on the battlefield and somehow tell you it's not gay. So I just don't get it. You, yeah. We're kind of like a walking oxymoron. Yeah. Just like how Germans say we love freedom and we like, we like uh, being civilized, but then they will just round people up and put them in ovens. Yeah. It's just so what it is. We're all a little weird. Yeah. It's just all a little weird. And should we talk about the Hessians for a second or should we just wait till no, next that's week? That's another episode. That's all that's that episode. Cause it's just something interesting. I learned about the Hessians. So I can't tell them now Cause I like to, I mean, did you hear one word he said? I mean, I mean, sorry, we just, that was just an eight minute delay. I'm sorry if the podcast, pa well, just paused, but we just, and we got a call from Pat Finnegan. And we got it. Yeah. That we got Patreon content for our $25 members. You get all those types of things that could get us sued. Yeah. Patreon.com slash Bay Ridge boys. Go there now. If you want to hear the Pat Finnegan call, we are a podcast on the run. Next thing you know, we're going to be doing this. Like we said, like Edward Snowden from different embassies around the world. Yeah. From different embassies around the world, because cause make no mistake, we live wild. We live free. And that's how I want to live. Yeah, okay? don't I don't want to live in any other place and I can't be fucking wild and free. Yeah. And no, you can do that best in America. Yeah. America's just best. Now, because America is a place where like you can really live. And that was a really beautiful thing you wrote on on um, that you wrote on our Instagram page. What did I write? I couldn't believe you wrote <laughs> I couldn't believe you wrote that like, you know, you know, the individuality is the most important thing to freedom. And, you know, America is the type of place where you can you can uh, judge people for individually who they are, because that's when you're the most free is when you're being yourself and you got to look beyond culture, ethnicity. And you can't judge people like that. You, you, you got to love or hate people for who they are, not for their culture, or their religion, because that's what America is about. That's what the great experiment is about, is about truly being yourself and truly being free and totally being a complete FF. You can do that here. And that was a beautiful thing you wrote, cuz. Did I write that? Yeah, I mean, nobody knows who wrote it. We have oh, this yeah. up who's going, we don't know. Because maybe I blacked out and fucking wrote that. Yeah, I think you blacked out and wrote it. I didn't write it. People, I don't know if I wrote it. I don't know who wrote it. Then <laughs> none of us know who wrote it, and we asked the people to guess, and they, yeah. most people are saying it was either me or Venetia. All I know is, all I know is but that, I think it was you. all I know is that Venetia is a strong, no, in, no, independent, no, no yeah, listen, okay. all I know is Venetia we is a strong, cackle. independent, smart woman, yeah. and I, I appreciate everything she does for this podcast. And it's really nice to have a woman um, in charge of our podcast. Who's very, who's very smart and has got, and it's just got a great head on her shoulders. And someone that I, I want my daughter to aspire to be is a woman like Venetia. Right. 
Veritia is a classy, classy, classy woman who just she looks at you and wants to clean you out. Not 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 Coco. She wants to remove you from her neighborhood. Yeah, she wants to remove my yeah. neighborhood. And yeah, it's just yeah, it's just, yeah, I'm, yeah, she yeah, she looks because Veritia is just a classy, classy Greek woman, Cause. and she's gonna only be with us a couple more weeks because she's just doing this to kill time while she's in her twenties. Because is Mike Mush just a human love sack? Because Mikey emoji face, like yeah. I said, when we do our first show together in New York City, which we're about to announce. Yeah, we will announce it soon. Yeah, Mike Mush is going to open the show. Emoji yeah. face is going to open the show. And then he's going like he's while you're performing, he's just going to lay on his back with his belly up <laughs> behind you in case you go down. So you fall on a pillow. And yeah. same for me. Yeah. No, Mike. He what, is a love sack. No, what's going to happen is Mikey Mush is going to go up and he's going to do really great. And it's going to have all his jokes. Yeah. And I, <laughs> <laughs> and, and he's gonna crush and then at least he could take a joke not like hey Bert yeah and then when me and then when me and you go up what we're gonna do is whatever venue we pick we're gonna make sure that they have nets that come lower down from the ceiling yeah and then just in, ca- just in case just in case you know we go down we got the nets right there cause you may go down I may go down but I'm not gonna go down I'm uh, I'm gonna be in San Antonio this weekend guys. no San Diego San, San Diego. I mean you're just a Sandra D yeah I mean yeah. And I don't know if I'm gonna go San, San Diego, Diego. You, what, what are the bets do you guys want to write on right on our walls <laughs> history hyenas patreon what are the chances yadi p goes down in san diego this san diego because i really hope that you booked a flight to san antonio <laughs> and you just land and you're like why am i here again this place looks familiar you'd be like oh yeah i was there two weeks ago i'm supposed to be in san diego i'm in ff the microphone just fell out yeah you gotta put it back in cause. hold on let's get it back in okay now we're back because First of all, before we get into yeah, and now I don't even know if we're recording. No, we are recording. Just let me click this back in. Yeah, okay. okay. We're, uh, yeah, is it working? Yeah, I think so. Let's just see. Can you open it up with your face ID? Yeah, hold on. I can't believe your face ID fits the whole head in there. That screen is too small. Yeah, see, now it's just saying minus thirteen minutes. What does I that mean? I don't know what it means, but let's just keep going. Wait, what does that mean? I don't know. It says minus thirteen, minus twelve. What's going on? Are we, are we recording backwards? Yeah, I don't know what's happening, but... <laughs> you want to press stop? You can always press start again, right? Or... Okay, I, I think we have to start the... Re- <laughs> I think we just started it over, but that's okay. We're we just going to... We're going to have Zach edit it out, so that means this podcast will be available in three weeks. No, th- no, 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 no. What's going to happen is this podcast will probably be available in two parts, because I, I accidentally hit no, the wrong button. He'll edit it together. Yeah, but he's... Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. he'll edit it together, because I like to just get curled up like this. I know. I like to just get curled up like... Yeah, because, and I noticed that, unfortunately now, like I noticed, and I didn't even realize you I was doing it. sit on your forehead. Oh my God. Yeah. So I, not, I noticed that now my daughter, sometimes like she'll just sit, she'll just, she'll just sit on, on top of the tables. So my daughter just w- sits on things like a Sphinx cat. Yeah. Because unfortunately she watched her daddy do that. Yeah. I mean, your dad's a Sphinx cat, so her daughter's going to be a Sphinx cat. And also your daughter gave me a couple of clean, swift kicks to the head. Yeah. She's just what it is. Cause, and, and then she tried to, uh, she put the pillow over my face, pillow over my face. She was practicing for killing one of her ex lovers. It's just what it it's is. It's what Latin people do. And we, shouldn't be joking about that uh, you know the weird thing about being a comedian yes it's a very strange profession we're talking about all these things are interconnected because this week we had probably the biggest tragedy that I can think of in the comedy community since right. I've been doing comedy um, and it's all kind of inter- I would say I would say this is the biggest tragedy in the comedy community um, yeah I would say that that other than that, or Kevin, Brendan, Bar- Kevin Barnett, Kevin Barnett or, or Brendan Schaub getting a special. One of those three. <laughs> Wei Shan Chien. Yeah. Wei Shan Chien. It was really funny, though. Yeah. Yeah. It's just. <laughs> Wei Shan Chien. Wei Shan Chien would just. Kid, I mean, that kid will fucking hurt me. So. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, we're just yeah. kidding because Brendan's a good friend of the podcast. <laughs> so I figured we could say it, and it's just a joke. Don't hurt me. He's a really and he, and he wants to come on our, on his podcast. Yeah, well, here's the thing. Yeah, I mean, but was it was it worth the joke or was it not it worth was it? Worth it, Kirsty. It was worth it. You're a kid who's just got pistols in your fire. Yeah, you're a fire. You're a paranoid kid in, in the dark. Yeah, you know who you are. Yeah, do you want to know who you are? Who am I? You're Jody Foster at the end of Silence of the Lamps. 
Yeah. Where you're just going like this with your pistol in the yeah, back. Yeah, just shoot. And you don't know where the fucking psychopath yeah, killer is. I'm just going to hit Buffalo Bill with his dick between so his legs. just popping shots in the dark. Do you think our fans laughed at that one, though? Like our true comedy fans? Yeah, the true hit comedy hard. fans did. But here's the deal about Brendan Shaw. Shaw yeah, yeah. Yeah. To be honest with you, I only watched about two, three minutes of it because you put it on. Yeah. And I was actually impressed with how good he was for doing it. Me for, too. For, Me too. How many, I, how many months would that be? Three years. Uh, that's 36 months. 36. He's been doing comedy. No, he's great. Months. I only made the joke because, you know, he was talking about on his podcast about like, oh, people were shitting on the special. But Giannis and I watching it actually were like, this is fucking impressive for guys who been doing it for three months. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Look, here's the thing about stand up comedy. And I want to fuck him right in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> here's the thing about stand up comedy. It, it, you don't. It, <sighs> Anyone can do it. Every, everyone's doing it now. Who's not a stand-up comedian? Yeah, who's not doing it? You, he, this is the funny thing about the modern world we live in. Talking about the amenities of modernity. And oh, there we go. That's another That's another telltale sign you're in FF. If yeah. you say amenities of modernity. You say amenities of modernity. And on the elliptical. Yeah, you're living in a park slope world. Yeah. Here's the thing. This is actually hilarious. Like... Every, oh, do you want to crack open a brew? No. Okay. Everyone, it's 11.20 in the morning. I know. Everyone has a podcast now to the point where your audience, just like at those alt shows, remember when you used to right. those alt shows? The whole audience is also comedians and artists. Right. So right now, everyone, nobody has a real job. There are no real jobs to get in America. Yeah. There's no factory jobs. There's no jobs, real jobs for dumb people anymore. Right. So you can actually get a whole group of fans that are also yeah. do- comedians. It's like Gary Goldman's writer tips. He just, he, those are all inside tips about being a yeah. comedy writer. Yeah. But they got him big because everyone's doing comedy. Everyone's doing comedy. That's why I think that, you know, national income that that kid Andrew Ying Yangs wants to do. The, that's the only Democratic kid that yeah. I like. That's the only thing that's possible because look, Bre- Brendan Schaub, he was a fighter. He was a fighter. Yeah. But I love how like. And but, now he's a comedian. But like we're also living in this world that's like people can't distinguish reality. Like when I was watching the Democratic National Debates a couple of weeks ago and Andrew Ying Yang came on and said, oh, um, you know, we need a national base. His national. It's not Andrew Ying Yang. What is it? It's Andrew. It's Yang. OK. Yeah. Yeah. So Andrew, Andrew Yang. Yeah. Yang Yang. I like him, too. Yeah, I like him. He and said, I like Tulsi. Tulsi, too. I yeah. Like her. He said, well, we need a base national income and, you know, because robots are taking over the world and it's just what we're going to need. You could hear a pin drop. Nobody. The next one up, Gillibrand says, if I get it, the first day I get into the White House, I'm going to Clorox it. Yeah. Fucking applause break. Right. Because I'm like, yeah. we're just living in a te- with the fucking Muppets. Uh, Tim Dillon said it best. Quote, unquote, the search for truth is over. It's over. We're just kind of living in sort of like a candy land until this thing ends. Until it ends, yeah. Unfortunately. So why not have a good time and eat some muffins? Yeah, we should eat some muffins, have a good time, and have a few anxiety attacks. Yeah. Because, look, the climate is going to fall apart. It's just what yeah. it is. It's just what it is. Because is there a way I can get comfy, wumpy, and lay on your chest right no, now? No, there's no way I can do it. And I know every time I bring up climate change, I know you and Ridgewood has a different opinion. You just go, look, that's just not, there's no such thing as climate change. You you, you, you lesbian, you lesbian boy, you lesbian boy. There's no the such thing as climate change. Cause make no mistake. The climate change is just a scheme that the Chinese made up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause c- can Pat Finnegan, we talked to Pat Finnegan for nine minutes. Did you understand one word? He said, uh, fuck, fucking, uh, how many times did he say the word fuck? Fucking, uh, so how many fucking suits you gonna wear? So fucking, uh, I, I, I can't bring 14 pairs. So, I mean, he basically sounds like Sean Terry. <laughs> I mean, when I'm doing Sean Terry, I'm basically doing a patty fly ball. Patty fly balls. I mean, cause isn't it funny that he's calling oh, me up and asking me what I'm wearing? Yeah, he was asking you what you wear, fucking. If you want to hear it, you gotta go to fucking, uh, you gotta go fucking patreon.com. Uh, Slash Bay Bridge Boys. Yeah. Let's make that, just because we could get legally sued, why don't we make that for the Hondas? Want to make that for the hundos only? Or we got to make it for the 25s. I think 25s and ups. I think everyone who's going. I mean, we said some things about some guys. I know, but who? But whoever's going 25 and up. They're they, on our side. They, they don't want to fucking expose us. They're in our mafia, us. yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're they don't want to expose yeah, us. Yeah. Unless you get a fucking rat that wants to get in there and expose us. Yeah, yeah. Somebody voted for AOC. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. I'm, can we just. I, I, I'm just kidding about AOC. Obviously, I don't really know anything about politics. But can we just. Can we just admit, uh, truly, I'm somebody, me and Yanni, obviously, as you know, we fuck around, but like, I'm more liberal than anything. I like what AOC, I like the things that she says, some of the things she says, but can we just admit that most of these politicians don't like straight white men 
on the left. Can we just admit that like AOC doesn't like white guys? I know she has a white boyfriend, but that what you do sexually has nothing. Can we just admit that Elizabeth Warren, they just don't like straight white males. Can we just admit that, that yes. they think we are the cause of it all? That doesn't mean I won't vote for them. doesn't mean I don't believe them because I'm very secure with who I am. But I'm just saying like, can we just admit they don't like us? Yeah. Is I that mean, okay to say? We're perpetually evil right now and we're all grouped into one and we're, we're, we're a monolith like, you know, and you know what? Monolith. They, it they sounded like, like Mike Mush. And you know, there's a couple of two mass shootings that just happened on the same day, um, which is getting pretty impressive for America that two are happening in the same day. One it's, extreme right, one extreme left. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty impressive. We're number one. Yeah. But anyway, they, they say these are all white guys and, you know, doing it. And it's like, yeah, it's all white guys. But, you know, there's a reason for that. And I'll tell you why there's no black mass shooters, because they wouldn't be able to not brag about uh, the planning of it. Because as soon as they bought their first AR-15, they would take a photo and put it on Instagram, uh, bragging about it uh, with money in their mouth. Wei Shang Chien. Wei Shang Chien. That's one of the first times in the history of this podcast where we have to give Giannis a Wei Shang Chien, and we have to give three in a row. Yeah. Wei Shang Chien, Wei Shang Chien, Wei Shang Chien. Because, yeah, they'd pose with the gun and make a guap video. Yeah, it's, it's just, just what, what it is. And say, hashtag, about to go shoot some shit up. Yeah, and then Migos would remix it. Yeah. Wei Shang Chien. Because black guys are too flamboyant, too flashy. Right. White guys are like creepy and Guys, the key to life is hydration. Yeah? Oh, you mean like some waters? No, because I'm talking about a little special product called Liquid IV. Liquid IV, liquid yummy. I heard that that thing has more vitamin C than an orange and more potassium than a banana. Because water's not enough if you're dehydrated. Yeah. You need potassium, you need sodium, you need your glucose levels to be right. You yeah. know this because you're a doctor. I'm fucking doctor because one stick of Liquid IV in a 16 ounce of water Water to give as much hydration as two or three bottles of plain water. Because you've been on a water app, you should forget the water app. Stop drinking water. Just start drinking Liquid IV. I already have because they sent me some free ones to my house. Guess what? Liquid IV is also donating liquid IV to hospitals and stuff for COVID patients to keep them hydrated because make no mistake, first responders, food banks, veterans, and active military need to get their water. They need to get their water. All you got to do is go to liquidiv.com. Use the promo code WILD. You're going to get 25% off anything you order. I mean, that's insane. Liquidiv.com. Use the promo code WILD. You get 25% off any of your hydration needs. It's wild. All you do is you take the liquid IV stick, you put it in the water, you mix it all around. They got great flavors like strawberry, other flavors, and it's delish and it's healthy for you and you get all the elements you need to stay hydrated. Because for a long time, I just thought it was, I thought it was liquid the fourth because I was looking at Roman numerals. Yeah, because it's history. liquid IV. It's liquid the fourth. Liquidiv.com, promo code WILD. Everyone sleeps different. That's the thing. Some people are side sleepers. Some people sleep on their backs. Some people sleep on their stomachs. Some people sleep with teddy bears. That's why I got myself a Helix mattress because you can tailor it to the way you like to sleep. Because you told me, you told me, I'll never forget. You said, bro, I've been getting the best night's sleep. So my life changed. I said, what did you do? You said, I got a Helix mattress. I got the Helix mattress. The very first night I slept on the Helix mattress, I got my girl pregnant. We're having another baby. That's what it is. And we're not yeah. joking. We got them. They gave them to us for free, of course, because yeah. we're promoting it. But get yourself a Helix mattress. All you got to do is take their two-minute quiz, yeah. fill out what your preferences are for the way you sleep, and they will match you to the type of mattress that works best for you. It's what it is, because all you got to do is go Go to helixsleep.com slash wild. That's helixsleep.com slash wild. And you're going to get a freaking discount, Bubba's. What is the actual discount? Helix, you're going to get $200 off all mattress orders. I did not expect that. Up to, oh, sorry. Helixsleep.com slash wild. And you get up to, up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash wild two free pillows i mean you also get a 10 year warranty you could try this thing out for a hundred nights risk-free and there's a warranty i mean good luck trying to fucking lug a mattress back though it's what it is baby <laughs> helixsleep.com slash wild and weird yeah. and they keep it quiet they buy the body armor like black guys would get the body armor and then they'd like have an artist come and put graffiti on it yeah. or have a matching hat with it like it's just it would be too much 
yeah. flamboyancy before and they would get caught. Then they'd be driving to the mass shooting. They'd, they'd have the car windows open. They'd be playing rap music way too loud. They'll get pulled over. Yeah. And then they'd be starting another type of video. Wei Zhang Xi. Wei Zhang Xi. And because, you know what the truth is, like, honestly, on a serious note, like, people, like, you know, I saw. Those are all jokes, guys. I, I, absolutely all jokes. I saw, like, you know, like on CNN, they're like, reporters are crying, making tearful pleas to President Trump, like it's his fault and all that stuff. But these mass shootings have been happening. If, if nothing changed after Sandy Hook, when 20 fucking toddlers were fucking murdered in their classroom, nothing is going to change. Do you change. understand? Nothing is going to change. No. If not a damn thing changed after that. No, no. Okay. That nothing will ever change. No. So that's why, like, we're talking about anxiety today. It's like, I have anxiety. I take it with me because it's like, we're living in a, in a place right now where it, it's a little, it's obviously very dangerous. There's all these horrible things, horrible things that we can see now that have probably always been happening, but now they're, now they're on video and we can see them but nothing's gonna fucking change so you're just gonna have to suck it up you just suck it up and you're just gonna have to get out there and live your day i have anxiety i have depression all i do is fucking deal with it move on i put it in a fucking briefcase an emotional briefcase i move on and i just push my daughter on a swing so stop your fucking bitching and crying every fucking day understand it's not gonna change you live your life for you the people that come into your life into your existence treat them with kindness treat them with care but but other than that, nothing's going to change. That's a, that's a little message brought to you by Steel Pipe Chrissy. And you want to know why I love doing the podcast here? Yeah. Because I can do a face dive if you lost that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because that was a fun face dive. Yeah, because yeah. cause make no mistake. Can you just hold the phone a little bit? Because I have to pee. Yeah, yeah. Go pee. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this is, yeah, I don't even, uh, yeah. I don't, we don't even know how much we've done because this is going to be part two of a recording. Do you think the other one got a race? Didn't get erased. You sure? In, in ten minutes. You sure that other one didn't get erased though? Because let's just do forty-five minutes. Because I'm starting to run out of energy. No, but do you think the other one got erased seriously? No, it didn't get erased. Thank God. Because unfortunately, we experienced a real tragedy, like we just mentioned, um, in the comedy community. My my old manager, David Kimowitz, um, who was my manager for around eight years. Um, Owner of the stand comedy club and restaurant, which just reopened in a better location um, and a, a, a much bigger and beautiful club. Um, I'd say the most beautiful club in the city as far as just ambiance, um, beautiful food, drink. He was murdered in his house. So we're dealing with that. And I went to the funeral yesterday and uh, it's been really sad. I've been crying a lot. And uh, he was a, he really was a great guy. His funeral was packed. The story's in the news. You can read about it. Just Google David Kim, David Kimowitz. It's a fuck. It's a very sad story. Um, you know, and what I've realized, you know, we'll talk a lot about this right now, but it's like the career that we do, it, you never, we never really take a second to stop and think about how stressful it is and how weird it is to just like deal with this stuff like this. And then you have to go on stage and be like, all right, so how are you guys doing? Like we have to engineer charisma and pretend like everything's great all the time because our job is to cheer other people up. So we got to make sure we're getting cheered up. So you got to get yourself around Chrissy D as much as possible because the kid makes you laugh and the kid's wearing my glasses right now and it's yeah. hilarious. I'll take a picture of it afterwards, but I got to pee. Go that means I got a healthy prostate, right? Yeah, got a healthy prostate. Yeah, I'm wearing Giannis Pappas' glasses. So this is me. This is, um, I'm Chris, Chrissy D, but I have Giannis's glasses on. So I'm thinking like but him. How do you take a piss? Why do you close both the toilet lids? Because I, um, I like to put the toilet seats down. Why do you have Why? But if you're going to pee again, you got to lift them both up. Well, what? Yeah. Because, um. Why are you guys here? Why are you putting them both down? What are you hiding? Are you flush? Yeah. So why do you do weird things that don't make sense? Because I pee sitting down. Okay, that makes sense. That's what it is. So I have on Giannis's glasses right now. So I just want to talk about the amenities of modernity. And I just want to talk about how Greek culture is number one, even though we're number 20 in the playbooks, number one in your hearts. I mean, we all have diners and nobody really cares about us. But I just, amongst the Greeks, we're number one by a landslide. But the truth is, we're probably about the number seven or eighth most successful immigrants in the country. But, uh, you know, we're getting bypassed by the fucking Chinese. It's a landslide. But, you know, listen, I'm Greek. And um, I love my wife and um, I, I just, if I'm being honest with you, if I'm being totally honest with you, I love my wife, but I love putting on fishnets and playing with my dick clit a little bit more. And um, she's great. Everybody's great. But I just like throwing on my fishnets. Um, 
So yeah. And I love my dog. My dog is my dog. Isla is my child. And I'm that guy that says my dog's my child. And I take pictures of it like it's my child. And I have a mental illness and I'm just a mentally ill person. Um, and yeah, sometimes Chris is like, Hey, can I throw your dog in electric and throw your dog in bath water and then electrocute it? And he's very mean. And, um, he's just kidding though. And the truth, truth is there's been a couple of times where I've looked at Chrissy D's big fat butt and thought, I want to get my head in that. Yes. Let me take your, yeah. What? Well, hold on. Did you hear my flow? You got good flow. Was it a good flow? Cause you got to hit the toilet. Cause nice hard? you got a good product. I'm going to put your glasses here. Cause you got to come take a look at my PNC. Let me go. To, we're going to go check Yanni's pee color right now. Let me go. Let me go check Yanni's pee color. Yeah. How's his pee color? Wow, yeah, no, you clear? You got crystal clear piss because you got a good process. You're drinking enough water. I'm hydrating? You're drinking enough water. Shout out to Smithtown Water Department. Shout out to fucking Smithtown Water Department and the boys that work out there. You guys are doing a good work with that water. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and our boy Tank Sinatra, who that's the podcast we debuted on, who he's probably going to do in stand-up comedy now. I mean, the kid's a fucking bodybuilder named George that's good at memes and now he's doing stand-up. It's just anything goes. If he could squeeze in stand-up in between his cycles. Yeah, it's just he's on Winstrel. It's what it is. <laughs> Tank's good news. Go check him out on Instagram. And Tank Sinatra on Instagram, fucking friend of the show. Love, love, love Big Tank. Yeah, so we had that tragedy. Um, you know, Dave was a nice guy. There the, was the real nice guy. More out to stand. He was murdered um, in a really freak incident. I don't want to really talk about it on the podcast. You can just go Google it. It's been hard. That's why the podcast is, uh, we're doing it today on Thursday. That's why we're doing it on a Thursday. It's a little late. And that's also why we're doing it from my apartment. We just didn't have time to get into the studio because, you know, we had to go, you know, obviously pay our respects and deal with that. Uh, tragedy, you know, um, and uh, it's just we weren't in a place to really be as funny as we could be. Even now, it's still hard. But, you know, we uh, Dave would want us to continue, I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, it's just brutal. He had two little girls and it's very, very sad. That's the brutal part. Yeah. So the whole thing is brutal, shocking and, and violent. And uh, it's just rare that, you know, somebody who's been murdered that way, taken that way. Um, you know, an unfortunate coincidence. My wife's friend from college was also brutally murdered. It was front page news in, in New York, uh, yeah. newspapers. And that's just strange. And he was murdered. Yeah. Um, you know, so I, we both know people who were murdered. He was murdered at Jerry Rackover's kid. You can Google that too. She knew that kid. They went to college together. Did they bang out or no? No, they didn't No, who him and her, my girl and my wife and him. Yeah. No. Her best friend was his boy, it was his girlfriend for four years. Okay. So, and the kid went to this kid's house to do some coke and then they got into a fight. Everyone's probably on steroids when you look at those kids. And they ended up fucking um, knocking them out and then cutting them up and trying to- Yeah, it's brutal. Them. It's a brutal story. It's right? a brutal story. But that kid got, did he get life, the kid? There's two of them. And I think they did. I think they did get life, the two of the kids. You got to get life for that. Yeah, you got to get life. And um, yeah, this, what happened to Dave is just brutal. Just Google it. But we've been dealing with that. And yeah, I've been going through a lot with anxiety. I used to suffer from anxiety a lot. I was shot um, when I was, uh, I got shot at point blank range when I was 20. In the leg. In the, in the leg. In the yeah. inner leg, uh, bullet lodged itself in my ass cheek. And then afterwards. That's another sign you're in FF when you got a bullet in your ass cheek. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And um, I, you know, I had panic attacks afterwards and anxiety of attacks afterwards. Of course. And I was so young, I didn't know what it was. It took me a while to go to a therapist and it did help. Um, and, uh, then I started doing nine 11 disaster relief at that time too. So I was dealing with those people's trauma. Right. So right, I right, was right. just like overwhelmed and young and stupid and having panic attacks. And, and a, I generalized anxiety disorder that I completely conquered without drugs, without anything that was gone. Um, it's come back and forth. I've gone through a lot. My mom's got Alzheimer's. She's broken her hip. I mean, the story goes on. Alzheimer's is a slow decline. I deal with a lot. I also overthink things. I worry as it is. I have your genetic code. I'm an FF. I'm Greek, all these things. But me and Chrissy are good friends and we both suffer from anxiety. Recently, I mean, I've been a stone cold psychopath. I've had zero anxiety because I've been able to build these walls up and compartmentalize now with what my dad's going through and his decline and all the things that me and my brother have to manage, it's just with the career and, you know, the career is just unstable always. Right. You're trying to, you know, you got to think about it all day. You got to cheer people up. So it's like there just comes a point where there's health problems all around you. And I've had health problems all around me, not even my parents, but other people in my family as well. So when that thing, just, it just starts to pile up. At some point you cave in and I know it's happened to a lot of you out there. 
we spoke about it a little on a previous episode after um, after Providence, but we figured we were going to talk a little bit about the history of anxiety because Chrissy knows so much about it because this kid was like the leading scorer at St. Joe's and he was on the court scoring in, in, in Division Three white basketball yes. and having full-blown panic attacks. I was, I'll tell you what, when I was a freshman in college, I was a 90 90, 90 percent free throw shooter. That's good, right? By the time my anxiety crept up in my junior and senior year, when I was at the free throw line, my free throw percentage went all the way down to 50%, which is horrifying. I used to have to bring my cell phone out to the bench with me and hide it in my warmups because I was so anxious about, it was all directed towards girlfriends I had. If they didn't text me when they got home or text me where they were, I would just panic and think that something happened to them. I thought they died because on 9-11, even though thank God my mother survived, we didn't hear from her for 10 hours and I just thought she was dead. So I had to deal with that. And, and also, right, what happened right after that. So that was 9 11, and then I was dating a girl. So it was like all opened up. And then I was dating this girl, my first girlfriend, a girl I lost my virginity to. Um, she was, uh, we were uh, 17 or 18 at the time. And um, like three weeks after 9 11, there was a rapist in her neighborhood. And her mother called me. And so we were all worried about this rapist. She would walk to work where like a girl had been raped. And, uh, and, um, her mother called me hysterical crying one day saying that, you know, my daughter didn't show up at work. Is she with you? We're panicking. Where is she? And we didn't hear from her for about eight hours. And then she was just 18 years old. She had just not went to work to get her nails done and had like went to the beach and like didn't tell anybody because we were just kids. Um, but those two things opened up Pandora's box to me and released anxiety for almost all through my twenties. And it was very, very, very difficult for me to deal with. And sometimes I look back now at my anxiety thinking like how many nights did I ruin? How many relationships did I ruin with my anxiety? Because I was just not able, not equipped to deal with it. But then as I got into my thirties and started to live by these principles, if it's not going to matter in five years, don't give it more than five minutes. You know, even if the worst thing happens, I can deal with it. I'll be okay. Life happens and just getting old and growing out of it. My anxiety has subsided. Um, Giannis is now going through something where there's an actual reason to be nervous. That's the thing. When we were in our, when I was in my twenties, I can say, you know, I won't speak for Giannis cause he had different circumstances, but I could say when I was in my twenties, I didn't have anything to be anxious about. I was causing it. It was all coming from within. And that makes me upset. Now, if there are things that I have to be anxious about, then I deal that energy is, is there because the energy is there and I try to use it as positively as I can, because what is anxiety? Anxiety is just something it's the fight or flight. Anxiety only exists because when we were, you know, cavemen and we needed anxiety to run from animals because we were actually prey for other animals. We were just another animal on the, on the field. Like we were just another animal in the Serengeti. How so it does have an evolutionary purpose. Absolutely. We needed it. Now we needed it because we needed to run away from animals that were going to eat us. Now, anxiety is actually unnecessary energy. It doesn't serve a purpose anymore because we're not, it's something from the old part of our brain. You know, we have the new part of our brain and the old part of our brain. It's something from the deep old part of our brain where it's not a necessary thing. So all we have to do is try to find ways to make the energy that would normally be consumed by anxiety turn into something positive and productive. Yeah, anxiety was only, if you can believe it or not, I mean, obviously... Uh, throughout the centuries, uh, throughout the millenniums, uh, throughout the throughout human history, there's been different um, understandings of it. But only in 1980 was uh, GAD, which is Generalized Anxiety Disorder, um, only in 1980 did it become a diagnostic category in the DSM. Tell them what the DSM is. The DSM is it, like the Bible for mental illness. For mental illnesses. So there's the DSM and there's all different versions of it. And if, if you're, if you're, and I, if your mental disorder makes the DSM, then it's official. It's official. It's, it's officially recognized as a mental disorder. Yeah. So general anxiety disorder is an actual, you know, mental disorder. And I, I, I think a lot of people in the modern world, are suffering from it. And, um, like you were saying, it's your body. You were, what you were saying before your body just throws things at the problem, right? But your mind can create any type of problem. Yes. The thing is this, all our bodies do, all a man's body does 
every day, a man and a female's body, all they do every day is try to maintain homeostasis and equilibrium. That's especially for a man, literally every waking moment of its day of a man's body from the deep, 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 you know, science of it is just trying to maintain balance, trying to make sure the blood flow is going a certain way. Each chemical is at where it's supposed to be. And when you have start to have anxiety and stress, it throws the body out of balance. Then that's causes dizziness, headaches, all that stuff that we know about anxiety. A woman's body is the same, but also from its years, you know, after when it begins, you know, when the woman's body begins menstruating through menopause, it's just every day preparing for pregnancy. So that's why women have a lot more to deal with because every day it's just the body's just thinking it's pregnant or it's preparing for pregnancy pregnancy and wants to maintain balance. And then a woman's body is fucking wild because it's like, you know, once puberty starts and once you have your first menstrual cycle, it's just fucking chaos until menopause. And then it's even gets even more crazy until like a few years into menopause. I mean, it's just wild, but a man's body, you know, all I could to speak about is the point of view from a man's body. And it's like, all we we're doing is trying to maintain balance. So when that is thrown out of whack, then all these little symptoms happen. But yes, for the most part, anxiety, depression, these are are all things that start in our mind and are not at it's not real anxiety and depression isn't real but it also is real because the symptom like when you say oh i'm having when i told you Giannis, when i was like listen you almost passed out because of anxiety or you almost your hands are going numb because it's in your mind that is true but also what's true is the physical aspects of it. Your, your, your hand is going numb. It's just, you are going to pass out. So it is, it is real. It's real. It's just that the cause isn't physical. The cause is not, well, the cause is mental. Right. But your, your cause is mental, but your body is reacting the same as if it was physical. Same thing with, same thing with food allergies. I read this study that said 80% of people with food allergies actually don't have an allergy to the food. Hey, Bert. Um, but, but they actually don't have an allergy to the food. When they test their blood and test their skin, it doesn't flare up when that food is introduced, but the person really does stop breathing and really does feel sick to their stomach. So it is real to them. Yeah. It's a um, general anxiety disorder and PD, which is like a fear disorder specific, like agoraphobia, which is the fear to go outside. They usually go hand in hand, GAD and PD. Um, but uh, another example of a PD would be PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, which they used to just call um, what they, they used to call, call it shell just, shock. They used to call it just being an FF. They used to call it, well, yeah, they used to call it shell shock. My yeah. dad actually spent a month in a hospital afterwards with PTSD. Now at the time, they called it shell shock. Now, your dad also said in the Korean War, somebody tried to cornhole him. It's, <laughs> didn't you say that? <laughs> he did. Yeah, somebody tried to cornhole your pot. He also calls gay guys $3 bills. Yeah, it's just what it is. He says that guy's gay like a $3 bill. And he says, yeah, one night, one of the guys in the bunks when he was he was down there in one of the forts, uh, down there in the south, when he was training before he went to Korea, one guy tried to cornhole Cornhole. Chris yeah. Pontus almost got cornhole. And he did bang his fair share of Korean dudes. He did. He it's did, just what it is. Let's did, just be crystal clear. He did have sex with Korean prostitutes. He had sex with Korean prostitutes, raw daddy. It's yeah. what it is. And he's told me that, and it's just what it is. But your fear disorders are agoraphobia. That's a fear yeah. to go outside, a social phobia. And there's yeah. all other types of phobias yeah. that develop from an anxiety disorder. Right. So this was, you know, this only. Why did he think it took so long? To to acknowledge this, it only made it into the DSM in 1980, cuz. Well, cuz, you got to understand, as a country, I mean, we're just a little delayed. We're a little Franks and Beans as a nation. I mean, we only outlawed slavery in the 1860s. We are. And yeah, and we're the only country in the civilized world that doesn't have uh, the same type of gun safety laws that other countries have. Yeah. And it's not a fucking coincidence that we're the only one who has this amount of fucking mass murders. Yeah. And it's mass shooting. It's just what it is. Yeah. So, so we're just a little FF. So there's really no good explanation. I mean, I'm sure there's people who have reasons and, and there's people you know, listening right now going, you fucking have to have it's got nothing to do. People kill people with cars and kill people with knives. Yeah, it's mental illness. It's Whatever mental illness. you say. Whatever it is. Okay, yeah. fine. Yeah. I, you know, I'm not arguing with you. I don't, I listen. It's like whatever, whatever's going to keep our kids safe. I'm for it. Let's just try shit. Okay. Let's just try shit. Yeah. Let's just do that. Let's just fucking try shit. Cause yeah. So yeah, it's just what it is. Yeah. So they only made that split, um, between PD, uh, those specific disorders and general anxiety disorder in 1980, which was the official birth date of, um, general anxiety disorder as a diagnostic category. Yeah. So that, that is wild, but it was actually conceived a few years earlier, but it didn't, make it into the DSM, that Bible of mental illnesses, which I know well, because I used to do social work and I worked with people um, who had all types of different mental illnesses. Yeah. We used to always refer to the DSM 
and the DSM is constantly changing and constantly updating. Yes, constantly. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because mental... It's kind of like your sexuality. It's constantly changing, constantly updating. Yeah. Yeah. The thing about the difference between like... I, Cause you want to unzip this love sack and get in it? No. Okay. But you know the thing—the difference between like uh, psychiatry and uh, being a physician is like it's constantly changing. Whereas yeah. like, physical things don't change. It's like yeah. if you need to put a st- stent in your artery, it's like right. you got a clogged artery. Right. They, you know, just keep going. Cause I'm you're actually, getting in the love seat. I'm just actually having a little bit of anxiety, and I've noticed that when I'm having real anxiety, if I just crawl into my love sack a little bit, it just helps me feel better. <laughs> So I'm just gonna get in this. Yeah. God damn it. Why is it dark? What do you mean? I'm trying to make a video of you getting in the love sack and it's not what's what going on my phone? Yeah, just 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 up. just close it. Yeah, just close it. Because so I'm you, just a little stressed out. Uh, this is true. So it's like, yeah, I'm just a little stressed out, and this has been helping me. I just crawl into this love sack and it just it's just a little, it's just what it is. When you said you crawl into the love sack, I thought you were joking, but you actually do get into the love sack. Oh yeah, I, I mean, I've done, I, this is how I sleep. I don't bring a blankie out. I just, I usually just get- What's inside there? Let me see it. It's just, oh, you can crawl inside it like I that. crawl in the love sack. You ever go in there with the baby? Yeah, we, we have fun in there. We crawl inside the love sack. Have you ever slept in there like that? I slept in the, like this last night. <laughs> Chris is currently in the love sack. You're just going to have to go to patreon.com to maybe see the video, or I might throw it up on the fucking, on the, on the Instagram page. Cause you look cute. You want a pic of it too? Yeah. Okay. Cause I made a video, but here's a pic of you in the love sack. Wow. That's blue steel. Now give me a fun one. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just, yeah. Yeah. I just, sometimes I like to just vibe out here and I just, what I do is, <laughs> I just have to crawl in and I wind out like that. I just, I just crawl in. And I, I kind of just sleep like this. Is this wild? That is kind of wild. <coughs> why am I, why am I coughing? Oh my God. Oh God. So the first phobia meeting they had, the psychiatric community had, cause was in 1978 in White Plains, New York. Now, so they were out in West Chester. Say again? Was your mom getting banged up by Dinkins then? No, 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 no. That's, that was much later. Oh, okay. Yeah. They went to law school in like uh, the early fifties, I think. Wow. Class of 53, I think was when I they- forgot, cause I forgot that your mom and dad had you when they were in their fifties. I mean, no, they were in their late, my dad was late forties. My mom was like 43 years old. Yeah, they, just, Nobody says tree anymore. Have you met someone who said 40 tree? What, what happened to the word tree as for three? Because a lot of New Yorkers say tree instead of three. Because you were just an accidente. I was an accidente and because you were a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> my mother just really, I mean, could you, can you believe that my mom banged out Barney Rubble? Because I don't know how he got in there, but it must have happened young before your mom knew anything about the world. Yeah, my mom, this is why I think she was blind. But you know, your father's a master manipulator. So he went in there and he was like, yeah, I'm smooth, smooth, smooth. Probably he didn't have diabetes yet, so he was a little skinny. No. But was he a good looking kid, or just he always no, looked like? I'll, 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 I can find out. And my mom, my mother even said what you because you know your father. Because your mom was a pee. Because you know your father never really was handsome. So what happened? I don't know. Because was she with other guys before him? No. She was a Catholic girl, so she yeah. must have jerked off a few. Guys. I'm sorry if you're listening to this, your family. <laughs> I forgot you just spoke to me in weeks. I know. I this is a Patreon because Catholic school girls, the first girl jerked me off on a rock in the woods was a Catholic school girl. It's just what it is. Because they, it's almost worth it to be Catholic for how much of a freak it makes you. Case in point, you. Yeah, I'm just, uh, yeah. Because it's like real, it makes it even naughtier and funner, right? Yeah, it's just fucking naughty toy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because, okay, now I'm in the love sack and I'm comfy, wumpy, so why don't we just say goodbye for this episode? Because I don't, I, I don't know. I, we have, we did it. Your phone is fucking locked. Let's I don't have a face ID. How much time have we done? We've done. You haven't really fucking talked. You haven't told the people all the fucking shit you know about We've done anxiety. 50 minutes. I just told them. I told them five minutes. Don't give it more. Five seconds. Uh, if it's not going to matter in five months, don't give it more than five minutes. I've told them about what I think the pathogenesis of anxiety is. I've told them that. Um, I've told them that what I dealt with anxiety and where mine came from. I've told them, you've told them we've called each other FFs. I'm in the love sack. I'm comfy. Wumpy. Yeah. And look, there's, there's a hole in your love sack. What's this? No, 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 no. That's not a hole. That's, um, that's, uh, my daughter. She just sticks shit to it. Yeah. Well, cause let me just tell them a little bit. Okay. Just, just tell anxiety. Them. Just tell them. And let me just go into my, chain. you just go into your love sack and it's what it is. And it's what it fucking is. Anxiety. Um, 
actually the description of anxiety developed because in the 17th century. Okay. Yeah. Um, Robert Burton is a guy, uh, is a guy's name in, in 1621. He wrote the anatomy of melancholia. Okay. Now George Washington said he would feel he, in the book seventeen seventy six. He's always saying he feels melancholy because the British were whooping his ass. Yeah, and then after eighteen hundred, anxious expressions began to be considered uh, in them in themselves. And the French wrote. Um, uh, they wrote about Angoise, A-N-G-O-I-S-S-E. Ango- I don't know how you pronounce that. I don't know how to say any words that aren't fucking American. Yeah. Angoise, it, which was a species of tortured misery that bordered on anguish. And then the Germans adopted the term angst. So anxiety comes from the word angst, angst. which, uh, you know, obviously we know what the word angst is. We've adopted it into the English language. It's, a, you know, a foreboding, a fear of some future event. And the, sp- the Spanish actually had the same concept called angustia. Um, and in 1879, a British doctor distinguished worry from quote unquote panic, um, a term derived from the story of the Arcadian god Pan, who was said to make noise in the woodlands that inspired unbridled terror. So it started to all come together in the 1600s. Yeah. And then 1700s and 1800s, which is what I just said, is where each country that I just mentioned started to in some way formally recognize that this was a a specific problem. And then in 1866, the Frenchman Benedict Augustin Morel suggested severe anxiety was due to a dysfunction in the anatomic nervous system. And, uh, and you know all about that nervous system, right? That just, that's involuntary, right? Yeah. And then others followed his lead and set out to examine um, if this was a problem in the brain heart and lungs. And then from this perspective, um, Will Robinson's uh, robot was on the blink. And sometimes that is surely so. I'm just reading from something. Yeah, I mean, this is what we all were. Just, what do people, somebody call us Wikipedia, right? We'll just read, we'll, we'll Wikipedia sluts and we'll read the internet to you. This isn't Wikipedia. This is an interesting article. Um, and then Sigmund Freud um, who used to do blow? Who used to do a lot of blow? He, Are we going to go to Vienna, Austria? Yeah. Do you, have, do you have money? Can we travel? Yeah, I got money. We got, do we have to take Spirit Airlines to Vienna now? But I'm saving for a house that I can't afford. Damn it. But I've saved a lot of money. Are but, you going to move to New Zealand? I don't know, because it depends on how much of a fucking FF you become or not. I don't know what that means either. I'm just fucking spinning the wheel with what I'm saying. Because I like the way you spin the wheel in your brain and whatever comes up, you just say. Yes. Because Sigmund Freud was actually the first person who considered anxiety purely physiological. Okay. All right. So that's interesting because he was right about some stuff and he was wrong about other stuff. I think he, be- he believed women have penis envy, which I don't think so. I think they like their pusses. They like their pusses. And yeah, he also thought everybody wants to bang out their bombs. Yeah. I think there's a little truth to that. I don't think they want to bang them out, but I think your idea of affection and things like that. Because your mom it's got a certified piece. Yeah, but I didn't know her as a piece. When I knew her, she was she was broke down. Yeah. She was already, you know. Well, my, your dad meant she was a fucking piece. She was a fucking piece back then. She really was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, dude, it, it, it signal anxiety. Sigmund Freud, uh, he called it, he put the, put forward the theory of signal anxiety in which small doses of anticipation discomfort generated a cascade of self-protective responses. That's really what you gonna throw up? You going down? Are you going down? Uh, no. no. Jeez, I thought you were going down. That's really what it is. It's kind of like worrying about things that haven't happened yet. It's like when you get too much in your, you're not in the moment and you're looking, you're anticipating what could happen. That's essentially what anxiety is. You're not in the moment anymore. Anticipatory anxiety is the worst and it's what anxiety actually is. And let me tell you this. Here's another thing I learned. If the thought or what you're saying starts with what if, get it out of your head. If it starts with what if, get it out of your head. That's your anxiety talking. That is not what you're supposed, that's not the world you're supposed to be in. In the present, we're not saying what if. Oh, what if this happens? What if he calls me? What if this, that's anxiety. That's anxiety taking over. So if it starts with what if, get it out of your brain. That's another thing that I learned. That's interesting. So you think that's exactly, that's essentially what it is. It's all anticipating because in the moment right now, everything's fine. So even pain, even something is something like pain in the moment, it's not crippling you. The reason why you're always anticipating, even if it's a millisecond, it's anticipation because in this very moment, you're okay. 
Yeah, it's wild. Like before we started to become enlightened and started to develop, uh, you know, psych psychology and psychiatric. What is what do you what would you call it? Psycho. What would that field be called? Psychiatry. Psychoanalysis. Psychoanalysis. Psychiatry. Before those started to develop, and we started to look at the brain. Like you, obviously, religion used to be right. what people thought was going on. They used religion, so they'd be like, "Oh, you're sinning. You're thinking of sinning on something's wrong." Um, with your morality and even all the way back to as far as we can uh, tell in recorded uh, history, at least white man's recorded history uh, into the into the into the old Roman times. Right. In the Latin they had um, in the pre uh, pre modern Western Christian world, the Latin term was anxietas, which obviously that's you know, that's where all these words angst and everything come from. And where anxiety comes from is the Latin, like most words come from the Latin anxietas, which signified unease that uh, often took its uh, shape within a framework of sin, redemption and eternal judgment. So they, they, they saw it in the terms of sinning. Yeah. So they didn't really believe they were probably just all the stuff that we know now, like most of the stuff like Look, God was there when we didn't understand the cosmos, you know, like God was used to explain the universe and things like that. And like physical stuff, the less we knew about medical stuff, the more it was like, oh, God's punishing you for something. Right. Your, your stomach hurts because you were looking at a man's wife or some shit like right, that. Right, right. And the same thing with psychiatry. You're having anxiety. It's because you're sinning. So, so give so me 12 hair Myers and you won't worry anymore. So, yeah. So that's another thing. It's like that was real to them and that helped them. But in today's world, it seems like that makes things potentially worse because we have more of these scientific answers. Like you've always said, when science is at the top, all these things start to move when religion's at the top, like nobody really moves. That, that, that You can't argue that. When you look through history, they've, it's periods. Whenever faith becomes the dominant salient zeitgeist, reason declines and advancement human progress stops. And when faith is on the decline and, and, and reason is on the ascent, progress speeds up. Yeah, I mean, it, that's why we call those periods enlightenment, dark ages. Yeah. The dark ages was just a period where Christianity dominated. Yeah. Like you look at the Arab world when 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 um when when reason and things they were translating all the works of the Greeks and stuff like that, they had a period of enlightenment. It's just carrying that knowledge. It didn't matter the race of the person. The good ideas are there for anyone who wants to take them. Yeah. Culturally, if 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 your culture prevents you from adopting those those good ideas, then you're gonna have a backwards culture. It's just it's just what it is. is. You, you could say, oh, that was a white guy's idea or like whatever, but, but culture, it, it doesn't fucking matter. Ideas don't have a race gender or fucking culture or morality. They're good ideas and bad ideas and they're universal and they're from the platonic realm and they exist whether we exist or not. Two plus two equals four, whether we're here or not. Yeah, it's just what it is, cuz. And yeah, it was a good idea. It was a good idea. To do this podcast, it was a good idea to crawl into the love sack. It was a bad idea for me to have a tall iced coffee because now I feel like I did three bumps of Coke. Yes! Yes. All right, cuz. Listen, that was our fucking episode. Hopefully, Zach edits this together and it's fucking cute. We will read out more of the Patreon members uh, next week when we get back into the studio. Thank you for your support. Patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys. And also, tune in. We also, our bonus episode, thank you to our Patreon members. Our bonus episode, we would get further into detail about anxiety disorders because we always keep a little secret from you because we're fucking screwed. We're screwed in. Historyhyenas.com for all our merchandise and upcoming tour dates. Yeah. yeah.